Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. For patients who have neuroendocrine tumors, there are a number of different treatment options. We often focus on systemic therapies, and there are a number of options there. One important feature of neuroendocrine tumors is that they often metastasize to the liver, and sometimes the liver is the main site of metastasis or even the only site of metastasis. For those patients, there are other types of treatment approaches called liver-directed therapy. Some of those patients will be candidate for surgery to do a hepatic resection. More commonly, when there are multiple liver metastasis, uh, we use an approach called hepatic artery embolization to cut off the blood supply from the tumors, shrink them down, and that can be a very effective way to uh, reduce tumor growth and make patients feel better. Other patients will have metastasis that are outside the liver. And generally, the best treatment approach for those patients is use of systemic therapy. Uh, occasionally, a patient might be symptomatic from a specific spot, whether that's a bone metastasis, perhaps a brain metastasis. Uh, and on occasion, those patients are also treated with external beam radiation therapy to treat that focal symptomatic area. Liver ablation techniques such as radiofrequency ablation or irreversible electroporation are used for patients with a relatively limited number of metastases, typically tumors that are not too large. Uh, they could either be done percutaneously, uh, although that's a relatively rare circumstance, or can be done uh, intraoperatively in conduction with other cytoreductive surgery of liver metastases. More commonly, patients have diffuse scat or scattered by lobar metastases, and in that case, ablation techniques are really not applicable. But embolization can be extremely effective uh, for managing uh, liver predominant disease. Uh, we typically do lobar embolizations, in other words, uh, embolize first the right lobe and then four weeks later the left lobe or vice versa. Sometimes procedures require three embolizations. I have to say this technique seems to work best for uh, small bowel carcinoid tumors, which are often the slowest growing, uh, but they certainly have their um, role in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors as well. Although with the uh, availability of so many different types of systemic treatments, the role of liver-directed therapy is not 100% clear at this point. There are different types of embolization technique. Bland embolization refers to embolization of microparticles uh, with the goal of um, um, arresting blood flow, hepatic cir arterial circulation to the tumors. Chemoembolization mixes it with uh, cytotoxic drugs, these days often as, as uh, uh, cytotoxic impregnated beads. And radioembolization can either refer to uh, resin or glass uh, radioactive microspheres, surspheres or therospheres. Um, each of these techniques has their advocates. Uh, I have to say that when it comes to radioembolization, the short-term toxicities are lower than with bland embolization. They don't get this acute post-embolization syndrome that they do with bland embolization. But there's some questions about long-term toxicities, uh, things like uh, radioembolization-induced liver fibrosis that can eventually lead to cirrhosis uh, years after the procedure. So we do have some concerns about radioembolization. Uh, the bottom line is we really need to see prospective studies with these uh, embolization approaches comparing one technique to another. Peptide receptor radiotherapy is a very promising, relatively novel form of therapy for neuroendocrine tumors that express somatostatin receptors. Uh, it's been available in Europe for many years. Uh, it's been available sporadically in the United States. And it basically involves a simple concept of targeting radioactivity directly to the tumors by attaching a radioactive isotope to a somatostatin analog, which then delivers the isotope to the somatostatin receptor expressing tumor. Uh, the first generation of isotopes used was indium-111, which is the same substance used in Octrea scans, but because of its extremely short particle range, it rarely results in radiographic responses. The next generation isotope uh, uh, was yttrium-90, which is a beta emitter. It has a relatively long particle range. Um, and then the most recent generation is lutetium-177. And when it comes to tolerability, I'd say lutetium is probably has the best benefit-to-risk ratio. It rarely results in significant bone marrow toxicity or nephrotoxicity. 
and uh, response rates and even more importantly, progression-free survival are extremely promising with this technique. Uh, the data from Europe suggests that response rates are particularly high in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, probably in the 40% range or so, um, somewhat less in, in carcinoid tumors, especially carcinoid tumors of the midgut. But what's especially promising is that uh, last week uh, at the European Medical Society meeting, uh, a clinical trial, a ran first phase three randomized clinical trial of lutetium octreotate versus high dose octreotide was reported. And the response showed a very significant improvement in medium time to progression. In fact, an 80% improvement in, media, in uh, PFS. Um, this has been the first confirmation in a randomized controlled study that this is a, a treatment that has a lot of efficacy in this disease. And hopefully we'll see prospective studies in the pancreatic net field sometime in the near future. Other sites of metastasis are less common, but one of the sites that you can definitely uh, get metastasis is the bone. And bone metastasis is actually associated with a poorer outcome. Uh, in terms of treatment, we can certainly manage them like other types of bone metastasis. If it's focal problems, you can do external beam radi radiotherapy. If it, but frequently what we see is more of a pattern of multifocal bony metastasis. So bone protecting agent such as uh, zelindronate can be applied. And you can also, in, in some cases, use uh, radiotherapy given systemically, whether this is peptide receptor radiotherapy or uh, potentially with bone seeking agents in patients with very diffuse disease, such as uh, samarium or strontium.